Hey, what's up guys? Back with another video and this time I'm just going over some things that you might want to know if you're buying a used Nintendo Switch console. Some things that people don't know when they're buying a secondhand Switch is that sometimes you might run into some issues. So here we got a Joy-Con. So this is one thing you could run into. You could run into that this joystick or the joystick on the other side of the other Joy-Con uh, is drifting and that's just super common pretty much there's no way around the drifting issue at some point potentially every Joy-Con may drift um, so that is an issue but luckily what you can do if you do get a used switch and it is drifting you can send your Joy-Con in and Nintendo will repair it they'll send you a new Joy-Con back with a fixed joystick. Uh, I did this with my brother's Switch Joy-Con, sent it into Nintendo, shipped it to them, and they gave me a prepaid shipping label. They fixed it, they shipped it back, and uh, he had his Joy-Con repaired that way. And so you could probably do that. Um, one thing that's not covered by the, the Joy-Con repairs, and something that can happen, is that on the back of the Joy-Con, there is a locking mechanism. So when you slide the Joy-Con down, sometimes the locking mechanism can break and then your Switch Joy-Con can no longer uh, stay stay in the Switch. It can't, it can't dock into the Switch. So that can be an issue and the rail can be replaced. The thing that's nice is that actually the Joy, if, if you're a, a do-it-yourself person, you can actually buy the, the joystick yourself and do it for 50 cents. Um, it's a little complicated, but you can do it for 50 cents. You can replace this Joy-Con rail for about $5. So those are DIY fixes you can actually do yourself. Um, if you need to go to somebody, it might be more expensive. They might charge you 20 bucks to, to do these or more. Um, depending on labor. I mean, it is kind of labor intensive. It takes about 30 minutes to an hour if you're slow. I, I'm a little slower at doing it just because um, it's a little complicated. You can rip a lot of ribbon cables, but this is just, yeah, if you're buying a used Joy-Con, you might have issues with the rail. You might have issues with the joystick having drift. And as you can see, um, yeah, if you're, this is just an image of the switch, but sometimes what can happen is that, yeah, you'll be in the Joy-Con grip and your Joy-Con can slip out of the grip. So that's what I was talking about before. This image shows, um, you know, a Joy-Con that's going to be clicked in, but yeah, if the Joy-Con um, if the Joy-Con tab or the Joy-Con lock is broken, it'll, it'll slip out of the grip. Um, and I've seen this actually happen. Uh, another issue that you might have on your Switch console is you might actually have the battery go bad inside the console. Especially if you're buying a used Switch, you're going to be buying it and let's say it's four years old or almost five years old. Uh, it could have a bad battery and if it was played a lot daily by someone you might have that issue where it's it's just constantly dying on you because the battery has just gone bad because it was been played a lot by its previous owner or owners and the thing with the switch is it's a little bit it's a little bit expensive if you want to replace the battery probably by a professional because the thing is is this battery you have to heat it up um, you know some people use a hair dryer some people have a hot air workstation but you need to heat the battery up and what this person is doing is they're taking a plastic card and they're trying to take the adhesive out so it's not that easy if you're buying a used switch and the battery is bad and you're not really um, you know, good with taking things apart, 
it might be a little difficult if you go want to go in and replace the battery because it's not really designed to be user replaceable for the average person so you might need to pay somebody fifty dollars to a hundred dollars to actually perform and, and do this for you um, you know with the screen you know there might be scuffs or scratches um, the joy cons you know they may have scuffs or scratches um, that's just something to note and sometimes you don't know um, the exact condition of maybe what you're getting you know before you buy it so it's, it's usually good to have a photo of it like this with the screen on and then you can actually take a look at the full screen and see how does the screen look with an image behind it because it looks a lot different if there's no image versus an image on a screen you can't really tell sometimes if a screen is completely black you might not be able to tell if there are smudges or scuffs or something on it but yeah for the most part um, I think the biggest thing is is that the switch joy cons from what I've noticed those are the biggest cause for concern when buying a used switch just because they um, they oftentimes will have issues with the rails um, and you know this a used switch might have issue with the battery so yeah I just wanted to put together this short video kind of explaining things that could things that could go wrong um, if you're buying a used switch just because it's not always that straightforward oh one thing that I forgot to mention, I guess, is yeah, at the top of the switch, there's a game card slot. Sometimes the game card slot can actually go bad. Um, it's not that difficult of a fix for somebody who's tech, who's a little bit more technical, but yeah, sometimes the game card slot can die. Sometimes the SD card slot can also die. Um, those are just common things that might die is the game card reader it might not be able to read games that well or it might be a little finicky and the SD card slot those are parts that can die I believe each of those parts is like 10 or 15 dollars uh, if you do get it from China so those things can also go wrong uh, for the most part a lot of things um, will be okay. It's just the things that with the wear and tear. It's yeah the the game card slot and the rails and um, the joysticks. Those things can really be beaten up, and so those things might need to be replaced, especially on a on a switch that somebody might be picking up uh, that's four years old, three years old, um, almost five years old, uh, because the switch came out in in twenty seventeen. I believe so you know going on 2022 there's going to be older consoles and whoever you're picking it up from who knows the condition but yeah that's it for this one i hope this helps somebody in their you know purchase of buying a switch just to be informed on what things might break what things to look out for and you know there are fixes you can buy parts on aliexpress um, to fix the things that i've talked about that might be broken um, when you do pick up a used switch or things that you know maybe the, they work um, maybe the locking mechanism is a little busted and you want to fix it um, you can buy replacement parts there's tons of tutorials on YouTube to um, to do things like that I've watched tons of tutorials on how to reshell joy cons fix joy con um, drift myself by replacing the the joystick so um, YouTube is a great resource um, for fixing up an old switch console I hope you guys like this video like comment and subscribe and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one see ya